In this video, I'm going to show you how to do perspective correction in Lightroom. Perspective correction is important when you're doing architectural photography in order to correct the, uh, um, the keystoning effect that you see when you photograph buildings. And what that is, is when you photograph a building, if you point the camera straight at the building, you're going to get usually too much foreground and you're not going to be able to see the top of the building. And so we point the camera slightly upward in order to see the top of the building and some of the sky above it and have you eliminate some of that empty foreground space. When you do that though, you see that, as in the example on the screen here, the sides of the building tilt inward so that the top of the building is smaller than the bottom of the building in the picture. Now in reality, the building is not shaped like that. The sides are straight up and down. And we can correct that in Lightroom in order to make the building look the way it does naturally. Now this particular photograph here that I'm going to work on not only shows the keystoning effect from pointing the camera upward, but it's also not perfectly level because I handheld the camera instead of using a tripod, and my hand-holding hand -holding abilities are not perfect. I almost never have a perfectly level camera if I handhold it. And so we're going to be able to correct both of those problems here in Lightroom. Now the very first thing we want to do is go down to where it says Lens Corrections. Um, I always click the Remove Chromatic Aberration button, and that if the lens has any chromatic aberration, which is the um, purple or greenish color fringing around details, this corrects that. And the second thing we're going to click is Enable Profile Corrections. Lightroom has built-in profiles for a lot of different lenses, um, some made by the camera manufacturers like Canon and Nikon, and some made by third-party manufacturers like Sigma and Tamron. Um, what these profiles do is Lightroom has built-in knowledge about how much uh, geometric distortion that a lens has and also how much vignetting it has. And vignetting means almost all lenses project an image that is a bit darker in the corners than it is in the center. That's called vignetting and Lightroom can correct for that so that you have even illumination over the whole image area. Geometric distortion is when a lens renders straight lines. Rather than rendering them straight, it renders them curved, either bowed outward or bowed inward, which if they're bowed outward, it's called barrel distortion. If they're bowed inward, it's called pincushion distortion. Um, Lightroom can correct that automatically based on these profiles because the, the uh, programmers of Adobe, at Adobe have created these profiles after testing actual examples of these lenses so they know exactly how much correction is needed for a particular lens. And so you want to make sure that you've, that you've done that before you try to do the perspective correction we're going to do or else you're still going to see lines that might be curved instead of straight. Now the next thing we do is we go down to transform. Transform is where we're going to do the actual corrections. And there's several different ways you can do that. Um, Lightroom has built-in automatic correction that you can click. And for some pictures it actually works well, and I've found that most of the time it does not. If we put our mouse over the sliders here, a grid appears. And you can look and see how accurate it was. And you can see that it's not really perfectly accurate. The straight lines, the straight up and down lines in the window, are not perfectly aligned with the grid. And we also see that the horizontal lines in the brickwork are also not aligned with the grid. So the automatic function didn't work well for this picture. And to be honest, I think it's a waste of time for most pictures. I've never seen it work perfectly. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to undo that. Now there's two different ways you can do this manually. One is by manipulating these sliders. The vertical transform corrects the keystone effect from pointing the camera upward. And so you just turn this until it looks right. And you can see with the grid there, you can line up the, the vertical lines. And you just move the slider until it looks right. The horizontal correction is for where you have a horizontal keystoning, meaning that one side of the picture is smaller than the other side. 
And this is caused by not pointing the camera directly at the building. Instead, you may be looking at it at an angle. And so we can see what that does. And actually, I think my original belief that I was holding the camera non-level may be incorrect because if we look at the grid lines the horizontal grid lines look pretty look pretty accurate as far as the leveling. Eh, maybe slightly off on the horizontal lines across the top of the windows. But this is pretty close. Now if we notice around the edges we have this white line here where the image is cut off and that's because Lightroom is actually expanding parts of the image and reducing the size of parts of the image to do the corrections and so we need to crop this off later. And you can do that automatically by clicking the constrain crop button and that makes sure that everything that's in the picture is the image and there's no white lines or borders around the edge. Now one problem with that is sometimes you see little distracting things that you don't want in there that you might want to crop off anyway. And so what I do is unclick this and do the manual cropping. And there we go, that looks good. Now there is another way to do this too that works well for some pictures. I found some of them some of them that need more correction, for example, one where the where you really have handheld the camera in a in a very non level way, or if you've got one where it needs a lot of horizontal correction, there's an easier way to do this than than manually sliding these sliders until it looks right for you. Let me go back here and undo all the work that I've done already. And the other way is using these grid lines here, and that's this tool right here. Click on this and you see a little cross appears and what you do is you want to create a, what you do is you draw a line along something that should be perfectly horizontal like this line here in the window and you see a magnified view so that you can align it perfectly and I want to align it with, with the actual silver line there so we'll click that and we'll pull it over and you see a line has appeared and we want to align the other end of it the same way dang it, I messed that up Let's see if I can you can actually grab the little control spot and move it if you've messed up and didn't have it aligned perfectly the first time there we go now we'll do the same thing with one of the lower lines. You usually you want to find something that's closer to the top of the image and something closer to the bottom to do this with to make sure that, the, that everything is horizontal at the top and bottom of the screen. So we'll do the same here on the lower window. And now we need to do it with the vertical lines. And we'll do that with the uprights in the windows. And then once again, we have to do it on the other side. And now you can see it's automatically corrected itself. And by hitting enter, then that makes the lines go, makes our lines that we drew disappear and then we can check them by looking at the grid lines here and it looks like everything is very accurate you see the horizontal grip work is perfectly horizontal the uprights in the windows and the doors are perfect even the other even the other things in the picture like the windows in this building are perfectly upright 
Now something we've seen here is that a lot of the foreground we had here has been cropped off. And I would kind of like to see that bit of street that got lost. So what we can do is if we click the manual crop thing here, and we need to get rid of this little spot right here anyway. It's part of that street light that, or that little light that we tried to cut off before. There's a couple different ways you can do this. Um, if you take the scale slider and go downward, you see our missing image starting to reappear. But we also have these areas that we need to crop off here. And so if we do it like this, we can go back to the manual cropping and then pull it inward and crop off that white space. And also I've made sure to crop off this little light here. We can do the same thing on the other side. There's a little, little bit of white space showing here too that needs to go off on the bottom, so I'm gonna bring that up a bit. Hit enter, and there we go. We have a perfectly perspective-corrected architectural photograph.